talking about some great ways to record yourself playing trombone. Yay! So first let's talk about mic choices. Now there's two main types of microphones. You have condenser microphones, which will look a little bit like this in some way, shape or form. Or you'll have dynamic mics that look like this. Let's talk about condenser microphones first. This mic is the newer NW8000. It's a bit of a budget microphone, but you know, it does the job. And then you'll have dynamic microphones that'll look like this. Now you'll probably see these on stages and concerts and stuff. Usually they're made by Sure. This is a no-name brand mic. Both of them are both microphones and they both pick up your sound very well. Um, in my experience, I've found that condenser mics seem to pick up the warmth of the trombone much better than the dynamic microphone, which picks up kind of just pitch. But it's really up to you. I've recorded some samples, and we're going to take a look at those in just a moment. Now let's talk a little bit about mic placement. When you're recording, you want to keep the microphone in line with your instrument. right? So that's just the trombone sound comes straight out the bell. It doesn't come out of anywhere else. So you want to keep the bell aimed at the front of the microphone. Using a dynamic mic, you would point it at the bell. Pick up, pick up all the sound. You want to keep it about, I don't know, maybe two full hands away from the, from the microphone. Like, I like to keep the mic close, but not too close so that you don't pick up any of the room as well. You want to get a nice balance, and also that you don't clip the microphone, like you don't, you don't overload the pickups. So now that we've spoken all about recording a trombone, let's talk about some things you can do when you're mixing it in post-production to make it sound a little bit nicer. So here I've recorded a little bit of a song called Misty by Errol Garner on both my condenser mic and my dynamic mic, just to show you the difference between the both of them and some things on how you'd make the solo of trombone. So let's listen to the condenser microphone first. <laughs> the condenser mic, now let's listen to the dynamic mic, just so you can get a comparison for how both of them sound. <laughs> That's both the microphones. You can hear both of them are a little bit stuffy. I find that the dynamic mic is a little bit more stuffy than the condenser mic, but it's really personal preference at the end of the day. The one way we can make these both less stuffy and more full is by adding what's called reverb. Reverb. In Reaper, this plugin is called Reverb. This Reaper, but I'm sure you can find any kind of plug, any kind of re reverb plugin out there. So I'm just gonna add a reverb generator. Default settings for all. Now you can already hear the difference if I play it right now.
And then if we add the same reverb to the dynamic microphone, let's see how the sound changes. Now you can already hear how much better that sounds. Another plugin we can add is what's called compression. The top, that's what it's called. There's a whole bunch of presets here and there should be a bunch on the other one. You just pick one that you think would, would sound good. Modern vocal. Right now, let's hear it again. Add that same compression to the condenser microphone. Oops. And let's hear how that sounds. <laughs> already hear that there's a substantial difference when we first started so if I take the all the effects off we listen and then turn them back on probably doesn't sound like much to you and it really isn't that much because a lot of it is it's your playing and even maybe a little bit the quality of your microphone but a lot of post-production stuff is just making it a little bit nicer now on to the next project now this next piece is a song I did in jazz band a couple of years ago I had a nice unison solely in the middle that I thought was great to test how someone would sound you know playing in faster jazz instead of more mellow stuff like Misty so let's just take a listen to the soli that's the whole thing. So I went ahead and I recorded it um, with my condenser mic and my dynamic mic. And I also recorded it with a cup mute so that I could teach you guys a little bit about how you'd mix a cup mute playing a lead part. So let's take a listen to the just the condenser mic. <laughs> idea. Now let's just listen to the dynamic mic. Now you can listen to it with, with the cut mute on the condenser. And then 
let's hear the cup mute with the, the, the dynamic mic. <laughs> So hopefully that gives you a good idea about how the mics pick up. I think the, the dynamic mic is a little bit nicer for this one just because it's got a more bright pickup pattern, I think. So now, once again, a great plugin to add is Reverb. Just gonna add some reverb. This one's a good guarantee for almost for almost all of them. Really helps fill up your sound. Now let's take a listen to, we'll just listen to one of each, we'll just listen to them really quickly. I can't find the play button. Yeah. You can already hear that's got a nice warm sound to it. Let's listen to this one. Pretty good. Got mute now. Now with this one, you can hear the samples a little bit quieter because because of, of the mute and everything. So what we should do is, if I can find it, turn the room size down a little bit and the volume down a little bit as well. That way, it won't be too obstructive when you're listening to it and too overpowering. <laughs> That sounds great. Let's stop the scroll bar now. There it is. And now let's listen to the cup mute with the dynamic mic. So you can already hear the reverb helps. I think compression is also a great move, especially for these ones, for these types of samples, just because they're very bright and sometimes they can get a little bit too loud and buzzy. So let's add some. Comp. Oh, wrong one. Recomp. Let's go with that same one. Modem vocal. Just paste that on all of these. And now let's take another quick listen to all of them. Oh, I can't see it's so cluttered with all those FX windows. So let's take a listen. <laughs> That's a lot better. Let's take a look at the dynamic mic now. That's pretty good. Now let's take a listen to the cup mute with the condenser now. Good. Now let's listen to the dynamic mic. So now, now you have it. Just some reverb and compression makes for a great solo instrument. Now let's talk a little bit about how to mix trombones together as a quartet or an ensemble. So here I've got four trombones playing one simple chord from my arrangement of epilogue. So if we listen if you listen to, to the actual backing track. So there's that. Now I, I've recorded each these trombones playing one note with a bucket mute in. So let's just listen to the trombones by themselves. And here it only sounds okay, right? Because we don't put any effects on it. So one thing that you should always be doing whenever you're working on multi-tracking instruments is you should always create a new track over we'll create a new track. I'm gonna call it the the bus track. So trombone 
bus. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take all these tracks and we're going to send them into the trombone bus track. We turn off master send on all of them. We're going to drag them over so that all the sound goes through that main track. This way we can change the volume of them as one track. So for example, and now we can just solo the main track and it will play all four. And we can bring the volume up and down. So now we can move all four of them. We can just move the one, which is very handy. So first of all, we're going to add our reverb like we discussed before. Reverb. That's reverb generator. Give it a listen. It's okay. It still sounds a little bit wacky though. Another thing with quartets is we have to make use of the fact that headphones have left and right because so we got it. We can spread the parts around. So what I like to do is I like to think of a traditional jazz jazz band layout for four trombones. It goes second trombone, then first, then third, then fourth. So we're gonna we're gonna take the second one and we're gonna bring it to around 40. 50, 40, doesn't matter, around there. And then the, the fir first time when this is, at, is next to him, so we're going to bring it to about 25-ish, 20-ish, around there. And then the third time bonus is next to him, so we bring it to around 30 to the right, or 20 to the right. And then the fourth time bonus is past him, so we bring it to 50 to the right. Now we listen to it like this. You can hear the sound spread out amongst the ears. It's a really nice effect. It really helps, especially with solis and chords. Very, very nice addition. We can also add compression as well to help balance the sound out. Compression, nice. I think we're gonna need a different one for this one. Maybe background vocals. Since it didn't, it didn't do much, we're gonna pick a new preset. Let's go with Master Bus Galoo. So you know, it didn't really change much. Now just to make this sound a little bit nicer, we're gonna trim the beginnings of each clip to as close as we can that to eliminate the, pot, the static noise. And a little fade in, it's always a good idea. So let's just do that. And also a fade out. Then we're fading out, we want the trombones to fade out at the exact same time. So we're gonna see, and you can see I didn't stop, I stopped playing at different times, which is not good. So we're gonna wanna clip all of them to the end of the closest track. And then from there, put, put a fade out in for each of them. Boom, 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 boom. And you can see it's still not very much lined up which is a bit annoying. So what we can do is we can take our cursor, bring it right over there. Boom, 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 boom. And then now, take a listen. So you can see it fades out nicely. That's just some basic stuff you should know before you mix quartets or ensembles. Remember, stereo panning, reverb on the master bus track, and compression always helps. So this next example I have set up is for, is the trombone soli for Mark Taylor's Witchcraft. Um, it's got a great, nice and easy trombone soli. I figured it'd be a great example. So as you can see here, I have the bus track like we outlined in the previous example. In the FX, I've only added a little bit of reverb just because we went over that before. Now you'll notice that these takes are multicolored. Uh, don't worry about that. I just accidentally left some of the other tracks recording. And as such, the colors got a bit mixed up. But it's no big deal. So let's make sure our trombone bus is solely and let's give us a lesson. So you can hear that sounds very good, pretty nice. At the end there, it did clip a little bit and we'll get to fixing that in a little bit. So first of all, we're gonna make sure that we pan our tracks so that they spread out amongst the width of the headphones. So I like to look at it like a jazz band layout. So we take the first trombonist, he sits, I don't know, maybe a little bit off to the left, and the second player sits farther off to the left, third player sits a little bit farther to the right, fourth player sits even farther to the right. 
Now, if we give it a list, give it another listen, it'll already sound amazing. Well, that sounds pretty good. As you can tell, it still did the clipping at the end, which is kind of annoying. So one easy way we can fix this, we can go right before it. So in this, for this first one, we're gonna split it like this. Just bring it down just a tee bit, wee bit like that. So it stays in line with the rest of them. Now, if we listen. It doesn't clip. It's got a bit of a buzz, but it doesn't clip. Now we can do this for all of them. We might have to go a little bit closer in depth. Just so I didn't play right along to the metronome clip. We're gonna have to split that. Now we can bring that one down a little bit. Uh oh. That down a wee bit, and then move this one over a little bit as well. Split that, and then let's see. Go like that. Split this one, and once again, if it listens okay, we don't have to do anything to it. Now, if we listen to all of them, you see, it's still clipped a little bit on the right, which is. Not very good, so we'll just bring that one down a little bit, that one down a little bit, and now. Still clips a little bit, but sounds a lot better. Now another touch we could, we could, another thing we can add to this is some EQ. Now I know that I don't like use EQ personally, but light EQ is always good. So if we load up Reaper's EQ plugin, there's a preset in here that I really like. It's called track default, almost a little bit like this. So if we listen to it, it gives it a little bit more full. It makes it sound a little bit more full, at least that's what I think. So that's the same, so let's hear it without the EQ again. It sounds a little bit stuffy, but with, with the other instruments, it really helps them blend because it gets rid of the conflicting frequencies, which is, I think it's helpful in this scenario. So now let's take a listen. Sounds pretty good, but you can tell that the low end was a little bit stuffy. So especially for um, at least the fourth trombone, sometimes even the third trombone, you might want to bring the slider back a little bit, just to allow some more of the low frequencies to come through. sounds pretty good. Now, if we scroll down a little bit more, you'll see I also recorded these same tracks with a with a bucket muted as well, just because when we're mixing these instruments, it can be a little bit different within the, with the mutes in and without, without the mutes in. So now let's listen to it once again, all normal. See, it blends a lot nicer, but it's also very mellow. We want to bring that out. So first of all, we're going to pan it the same way we did the other ones. Bring this one over a little bit. We're going too even farther. Oh, that was... did this one wrong, sorry. First one like that. Second one like a little bit farther. Third over a bit. Fourth even farther. And now let's give it a listen again. <laughs> sounds already pretty good. Now I don't like to add EQ to these to the bucket mutes especially because it's so mellow and when you take out some of the frequencies it can really mess up with the sound. So we put that track default on this one again. Let's load it up. <laughs> 
you know, see it gets if we watch the the waveforms, you'll see it removes a lot of the the bucket frequencies. Yeah, there's that big peak right where there's the dip. Doesn't I find it doesn't blend very well. So if we don't put any EQ on, just a little bit of reverb on the bus track tends to make it blend really nicely. Another thing you can do to make it sound even better, and I've done for the bucket meets already, but I didn't do for the other one, is uh, raising raising the first voice and lowering the other voices. So if we leave all the voices back at normal, you can hear the lead voice gets a little bit drained out. So if we bring the other ones down, I like to bring them down like as if it were a line almost. So it goes down, 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 down. Now if we listen. it already sounds a lot nicer just because you can hear the lead voice so much better now if we go back to the regular trombones and do the same thing up here bring this one down a little bit this one down a little bit this one down a little bit not too much but That sounds pretty good. Now with the next example, this is going to be another multi-track, another quartet arrangement. This one is the um, uh, trombone soli from Insane Lyrian Music's jazz video game medley, uh, the third movement I believe it is. Um, it's a really cool soli, very fast, very technically challenging. And I thought it'd be good to show you how to mix this one because it's much more upbeat than the other um, uh, witchcraft one. So let's give it a listen. Don't judge my playing, I'm not amazing. So you can see it's definitely challenging, very fast. I've also recorded this with the um, uh, with cup mutes in as well because I figured that'd be a nice touch. Let's give it out one of this one as well. Let's go back to the regular ones for now. Um, when we're mixing these fast types of things, we're putting on our reverb. We really want to make sure that we don't overdo it because it can really, can really drown out everything. If you put the like the the, the, um, uh, the reverb too high and we listen to it, you can hear it kind of gets clunky between the instruments. So we want to keep it nice and light, not too much for sure. See, that sounds a lot better. If we put too much, it tends to get really clunky and blends all together, and we don't want that, especially for these clean, concise, concise passages. Once again, so I've just made the bus mute, did some basic panning here. If we're going to put our EQ back, let's put it back to track default. Especially with this one, it's, much, it's a bit higher in the register, so the low frequencies don't get affected too much. Since it's open, it helps bring out the brightness as well, which is very useful. That sounds pretty good. So now as you could hear, the EQ was a little bit, made it a little bit stuffy, which is why sometimes you gotta use your ears and do what you think sounds best, right? So if I go like, so now we listen to those. EQ. So I think that sounds better, especially without the EQ, because it brings out the fullness. But it's really up to you, your preference and how you think. So now let's take a look at the cut mutes as well. Once again, we only want to add a little bit of reverb, not too much that it's overpowering, because then it's going to blend all together. Especially with mutes in, the volume tends to be a lot lower. So you have to be much more cognizant of adding reverb, so it doesn't blend together too much. <laughs> again. Yeah, it sounds better. Also with our panning, I don't like to add EQ to mutes just because it messes with the, the mute sound and that's the sound that you really want. So I like to leave these as is. 
this last example we have here is a bit of an exception. It's a bit different than the rest of them. And it's mixing a trombone soloist with a big band. So this is the entire project for my Senorita arrangement. As you can see, it's got a bunch of tracks. Not to worry. So as you can see, here are the regular trombone tracks in pink. And then in gray is the trombone to solo. So now let's give a listen to it, just from give it a little bit of leeway into it. <laughs> So there's the entire solo. And actually the way I recorded I recorded this in two parts, both of which I recorded on this second track here. But whenever you're recording a solo, especially with a big ensemble, you definitely want to record it A separately, not with the not with the rest of the ensemble. Just because it's solos are gonna tend to want to do more takes, and if you keep the band there long, they're gonna get frustrated. That's not good. And by putting it in a separate track, we can isolate it better. So as you can see, these have like very similar panning, the same FX, as you can see. Same reverb, same EQ, same everything. The only difference is that this one's a bit louder just to bring out the solo, which you could do if you bring it into a separate track. So I'd recommend bringing all your solos, especially trombone solos, with any big ensembles, into a separate track so you can mix them accordingly. Like get rid of noise, you know, tweak individual notes, stuff like that. Just makes it a lot easier if you have it in a separate track than in the same track as the rest of your notes. So yeah, that's pretty much everything I've learned over the years about recording and mixing trombones. I mean, at the end of the day, what do I know? I'm just a kid who's been practicing by himself. And you don't want to sound like me, you want to sound like you. So make sure you go out there and you experiment and you hear what sounds good. And you know what you want you to sound like, right? And that's it from me. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. Please make sure to subscribe for more quality content like this. Thank you and I'll catch you guys later.